we have one more subassembly to make. The first subassembly we're going to make is going to be for the base plate itself. So we're going to include that, that, and of course the screws. With this last subassembly made, and we're going to call this base plate subassembly. Now we have everything broken up into the different subassemblies that we need, and we can start getting ready to manufacture things. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by creating what we call an MPS file or a machine part setup document. So that's done by going a couple of ways. I'm going to show you this way first. I'm going to right click, go to document here, and I'm going to go here to advanced, and I'm going to choose machine part setup right there, green check mark. And I'm going to call this op1. Why not? And all I'm going to do is take this subassembly, drag and drop it in here. It's going to ask me a very interesting question. It's going to say, do you want to disassemble the included assembly? I'm going to say yes. And what that does is that blows apart assembly structure because right now I just want to deal with shapes. And now that I've done that, I can right click and go to edit part NC. Let me go ahead and open up my manager over here just so the dialog box opens on top of it. Now we have all of these items broken into their individual pieces. Now I don't want to machine all of these objects. I only want to machine one of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch from the automatic stock creation to user stock. And now I'm going to go find the model for my stock op and simply drag and drop it down to there. Cool. Then I'm going to take the bracket, the toe clamp, and the washer. Nope, not the bracket, pardon me. The toe clamp, the washer, and the screw. And I'm holding control there, standard Windows feature. I'm going to drag and drop those down to what we call an environment. Environment are objects that you want top solid to automatically avoid when creating toolpath. Now, another subtle little thing that I'm going to show you is the fact that each of these dialogs are highlighted in a specific color. For example, the stock is highlighted in this purple color. Notice the model on the screen associated to it is the same purple. The environment is green, green. The finish is blue, blue. Awesome. Beyond that, if we go to the material section, you'll see that it's recognized that we describe the material as aluminum. Very cool. Green check mark save and repeat. Let's do it again. So I'm going to right click, document, blank template, machine part setup, perfect. We're going to call this op2 and I'm just going to bang these out really fast. So I'm going to say yes to this. I'll go to edit part NC and what you're going to see here is that you can get to a point where you're doing this really, really fast. So there's the stock, there's the two screws and I'm done. Save. Let's make the third one. New document. And let's talk about what a machine uh, part setup document really is. So a machine part setup document's purpose is it's a document where you get to tell Top Solid specifically what it is you're machining, what you're machining it out of, the stock condition, and what fixtures that you're worried about colliding with that you want Top Solid to automatically not run into. It's kind of cool. It's an intermediate document between design and manufacturing. Save that one. And we have one more to do, and then we're ready to take that next step. So again, new document, machine part setup, cool. Let's call it op4. Let's drag and drop set up op4 into there, disassemble, right click, edit part NC. We'll go here, switch to user stock, stock, components, green check, save, and we're done.